Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Update. It's the 15th of November, which seems incredible. It's the 15th of November, but there we are. As usual, we have all of the updates, quite a lot of AKS this week. Do remember it's Ignite next week. So next week's Azure Update will be a little bit delayed. I don't know what day I'll get to publish it. it might be Friday, might be Saturday, might be Sunday, because it's gonna be a huge amount of updates and I've got to get all of that prepared. New videos this week. So we dived into continuous access evaluation. This is a fantastic feature that helps us reduce the amount of time someone keeps access to today, a number of first party Microsoft resources like the office, um, if they are disabled, if their tokens are revoked, if their user risk level goes up, and if they change location, things like that. And I also quickly explored the advanced pace capability, which is part of the power toys for Windows, but it's really cool. And I just walked through some of the basic capabilities. So onto what's new on the compute side, so AKS now has this seccomp default parameter. So this is part of the secure computing model. And this is for the Linux node pools only. And it's part of the Linux kernel security module. And what this lets me do is if I think about the syscalls I can make from my sandbox container into the kernel, well, this can reduce and restrict the syscalls that are available. So if I had some malicious code actor within a container, if I enable this, it would restrict the syscalls they could make to the kernel and then the potential damage they could do. Now the default is unconfined, so it will not block any of the calls. But if I set it to runtime default, it then will restrict those calls. And if we go and dive into just some examples of when I turn this on, what it would do, you can see all these different types of syscalls that now would no longer work. So I can't clone new namespaces, it's denying manipulation on functions, and just a whole bunch of things that I no longer would be able to do. So that's a, a pretty cool capability when you're in those more restricted, maybe I don't trust everything that's running uh, in those container environments. Azure Linux 3.0, remember this is Microsoft's own Linux distribution built off of CBL Mariner. One of the big deals here is Microsoft owns that complete supply chain of their operating system. It's designed to be a container host, so it's only the OS packages needed to run container workloads. So it has a reduced attack surface, it's secured by default, it's got high reliability, and Microsoft are building, they're signing, they're doing all of the validation for this. So now with AKS version 1.3.1, 1.31, uh, I can now leverage the Azure Linux 3.0. And the AKS static egress gateway is now in preview. So ordinarily, if I want to control uh, the IP address that is seen for the traffic coming out of my AKS cluster, I would use something like NAT gateway. What this lets me do is we create a gateway node pool to which I assign a public IP prefix. Remember, a prefix is a set of contiguous IP addresses, and then those will get used for uh, that outbound traffic. And then potentially the reason I would want to do that is if I know the IP address traffic from the containers will be coming from on those other services it's talking to, I could maybe restrict it to only if it's coming from those IP addresses. Uh, Fleet Manager has a number of updates. Remember the AKS Fleet Manager really aims to provide large scale Kubernetes. And it's not just for AKS, I should say Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager. So there's a number of Kubernetes distributions this supports but it's got better staged-based update processes. There's native integration with Azure Traffic Manager when I think about global DNS-based balancing. So just a number of updates there. Um, AKS Ignore PDB on Node Pool Delete is now GA. So if we think about these pod disruption budgets, I have the idea that, hey, look, I want to ensure that I always have a minimum number of pods available for some workload. And I define that using the pod disruption budget, the PDB. Well, what would happen if I try to delete a node pool that had pods part of that, it would say, well, if you delete this node pool, you're no longer going to meet that pod disruption budget and it would stop you deleting the node pool. What I can now do is I can override that. So I can basically set a ignore pod disruption budget setting and I set it to true and it would now let me go ahead and delete that node pool. Talking of deleting things, 
Also now GA, I can delete specific VMs when I'm scaling in my node pool. So instead of it just randomly picking a VM that it wants to scale in, I just have more control over that. Now, if I do this, it will not do the normal cordon and drain, i.e. stop new pods coming to the workload and actually drain them off. So I would need to manually do that cordon and drain activity and then go and say, hey, I want to scale in and delete this specific VM as part of that. Um, the AKS Advanced Container Network Services, ACNS, has now gone GA. So this is a whole bunch of capabilities. It's built off of the, the Hubble uh, components to give me insight into my container level networking. So I can think pod level metrics. I can see in insights about my DNS. I get better troubleshooting capabilities. I can do fully qualified domain name filtering. So instead of having to worry about which IP addresses relate to a certain service, uh, I can just use those fully qualified domain names now instead. So there's a whole set of nice, really observability capabilities available. And AKS network isolated clusters are in preview. So if I think about an AKS cluster, there's a number of components to that. There's obviously Kubernetes, there's things like the operating system that's actually running those container hosts, and they all need maintenance. There's additional components, obviously, for AKS as well. So it requires communication to different places to go and fetch those updates, fetch those images, fetch those Kubernetes components. And they published a list of fully qualified domain names that it has to be able to get to. And then I could restrict it using things like Azure Firewall or some other network appliance. But that was work I had to do to maintain that. So what they now have this network isolated cluster is rather than me having to allow those things for really the maintenance of the AKS components, it will go and get those things through its kind of control plane networking elements. Um, now, there were certain restrictions about that, about how you're setting the updates to node images and node images you're leveraging, et cetera, which is all in the documentation. But this is really nice if you want to get away from, hey, today I'm running Azure Firewall just to control the components required to maintain my AKS cluster. Well, now that would let me move away from that. On the networking side, so Azure Front Door now has WebSocket support in preview. Remember, Azure Front Door is that global layer seven balancing solution. So layer seven, it understands HTTP, HTTPS, it has any cast. So the IP is available from all of the different edge things around the world. And as a client, I'll talk to the one closest to me. I just split TCP. So I established my connection to that endpoint and I establish my TCP, my HTTPS, and then on the back end from the edge, it goes and talks to the back end service. It can fetch bigger chunks of data and then serve it up to me so it improves my performance. Well, now it supports WebSockets. And this is just there by default for standard and premium. So that's gonna give me a long running TCP connection that's full duplex. And there's a lot of benefit to my workloads. Like with HTTP, I have to do like polling to see if there's something there. I don't have to do that when I'm using a WebSocket. So it's really good for those long running real time scenarios. If I had uh, like a chat capability, if I thought about live streaming, um, gaming services, WebSockets are really good for that. Now, one thing to bear in mind though, once I establish the WebSocket, once it's established the connection, if I'm using web application firewall in front of it, it will not perform further inspections on the traffic. So just something to consider there. On the storage side, I think I've talked about this before, but Azure Storage from beginning of November 2025 uh, will require TLS 1.2, so no more TLS 1.0 or 1.1. On the database side, so I guess there's an Azure Databricks serverless promotional discount. So I think this was 50% off the serverless compute jobs and pipelines, and I think 30% off the serverless compute for notebooks. This has been extended until January 31st, 2025. So just, hey, go and save some money. And then miscellaneous. So Chaos Studio is now GA in Canada. So that's Canada Central. But Chaos Studio is really nice. I create these experiments, and the experiment is injecting faults. So it could be, hey, this availability zone is not available. Uh, this VM is running at 100% CPU. Hey, I've lost connectivity to my key vault, whatever that is. So it injects that fault into my workload so I can make sure the resiliency features I'm designing work as intended. 
Well now, hey, I can go and use that in Canada Central. Additionally, if I'm using the Azure Kubernetes service faults, previously it required me to use local authentication with the Kubernetes. Now it can use managed identity, which is a really nice feature. Remember, managed identity is linked to the Azure resource. There's no secret I have to go and store and maintain somewhere. So now my Chaos Studio uh, can inject those AKS faults just using managed identity, no secrets to store and maintain. And the Azure Health Data Services capability is being retired from the Qatar Central region uh, end of October 2025. Basically, it's not highly used in the region. And so they're retiring it there. You would want to go and move it to another region where that service um, still exists. And don't forget, Ignite is next week. So expect lots and lots of updates. Uh, I think there's an online. I think you can go and register for free. And uh, I'll cover those as best I can uh, next week. That was it, uh, as always, and till the next video, take care.